looking over the word this week and the last couple of weeks, the Lord led me to a few scriptures here, and we're not going to jump into the whole story on this, but there's a couple of points that I want to make, and hopefully we will see where we've been, where we're at, where we can go. Uh, we want to talk a little bit this morning about family. And you know, when I was growing up, you know, the only thing that, that we ever really focused on was his hair and how strong he was. Can, can we agree with that? But we want to look at something that went on during all this time that the Lord had promised and what the Lord had said would come to pass. And I guess if we was to title this message this morning, it's, uh, it's what matters with the soul. The soul and the spirit of man and woman is going to dwell forever. Somewhere, someplace, and the way I read the Bible and the way I read the book, are we still good? Okay. We got it? Okay. Okay. All right. But, and the way I read the, the, the Bible, the only thing and the only place that we're going to go is one of two places. We're going to go either to heaven or hell. It's, it's simple. I mean, these, I've heard people say, well, you know, this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but I can't find anywhere that we're going to do anything else. When, when, when we die and when we have taken our last breath, it is over. It is finished. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Judges chapter 13. Judges 13, verse 1. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Hmm. Now, they did evil in the sight of the Lord again. So that leads me to believe that they had to do evil before, right? Can we agree with that? But the Lord is faithful, and the Lord is true to His Word. Amen? Like I said, we're going to jump around here just a little bit, but we're going to stay in Judges. Let's go on down and look at, uh, at verse number 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. You know, there's many places in the Bible where the, the, an angel of the Lord appeared. And I believe today that angels still appear. How many believe that with me this morning? And I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt, I have encountered in my experience as a Christian and serving the Lord, I believe that I have met two angels. But we'll not go into that right now. Therefore, please be careful, verse 4, not to drink wine or similar drink, nor to eat any unclean thing. You know, Medical science tells us tells us today tells you know women who are are in in uh, uh, the pregnancy stage not to, you know not to drink and not and watch what you eat because it's healthy and number one it can be dangerous not only to to the woman or to the baby amen but look what else it goes and say verse five for behold you shall conceive and bear a son. And no razor, no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Now keep in mind that they're in this bondage already. But she bore a son that he may deliver them out of the hands of the enemy. But... 
as we go down through here, we'll see all kinds of things that happened during this time period. You see, you and I as Christians, and in our walk with the Lord, we go through many trials. We go through many tribulations. We go through heartaches. We go through misery. We go through t trying times. But what the Lord has said will come to pass. A lot of times, you and I, we will get in the way of the Lord. We will try to help Him. We'll try to run from Him. We'll try to do everything that we possibly can to go around it. You know, it's simple if you're on a journey to take the possible straightest route. But it's simple for me to walk against this wall from where I'm at. But I can get to that wall, although I have went all the way around this building, I can still arrive at the same place. But it's took me longer, and it's hard to tell what I may encounter on my journey around instead of listening to the voice of the Lord, following the, 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 the voice of the Lord and His direction, doing what we're supposed to be doing when we're supposed to be doing it. Amen? And, you know, I do a lot of traveling, and, you know, I have found and talked to many people over, over the years. And I, I can't understand. I mean, I know we all go, go through things. The Bible says we'll go through tribulations and trials. But I cannot understand why, if we are Christians, we should be the most excited people, the most re, uh, rejoicing people on the earth. But I just can't understand, uh, for the sake of me, how, I mean, we get down, yes, but we need to call upon the one who has called us. Just like the song that we sing, His love never fails. It never runs out on me. But we run out on Him due to our own uh, fault, our own uh our own ways, leaning to our own understanding. Amen? Let's go on. Let's look at verse 6. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me. His countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. Let's go on down to verse 8. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O oh my God, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who we will be, who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was standing in the field. So she goes and tells her husband, she said, the one who came to me the other day, he came to me again. I'm just paraphrasing this because I want to get on over to where we're going. Look at verse number 20. They had already, uh, here before we get to verse 20, the, uh, they had already offered up a uh, one of the angel to, you know, come and sup with them, come and eat with them. And he said, you can retain me, but I will not eat with you. And it goes on to say, as the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, it happened that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their face to the ground. I imagine that would be something to... to I imagine we would all do this if, if something like this happened to us. Amen? Let's drop on down to verse number 24. So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon him. Man of Dan between Zorah and Eston. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon him. Keep that in mind. Now look at verse uh, chapter 14. Verse 1, Now Samson went down to Tema and saw a woman in Tema, the daughters of the Philistines. 
Hmm. Daughters of the Philistines, the enemy. Here we go. Here's, here's the beginning of where trouble is going to start. Now, remember, the Lord promised them a child. The Lord came through. The Lord, she bore the son. But Samson, he goes down and begins to mix with the enemy. I'm going to tell you something this morning. That's where we get in a lot of trouble. We get to mixing with the enemy. And, you know, some people, I've I've heard people say, and you've heard this yourself, they'll say, well, a little bit of this won't hurt nothing. A little bit of that won't hurt nothing. You know, it don't take much for anything to change. You take a clear glass of water, put any kind of coloring in it, that water will turn. I don't care what it is, because, you know, like coloring, you know, Easter eggs. We use the water, we put the dye in, whatever color you drop that egg in, that's the, that's the way it comes out. When we go to mixing with the enemy, when we go to getting in the enemy's territory, then he begins to control us. He begins to direct our pathway. And we think, well, I can do, I can do this. This, this, it really won't hurt nothing or nobody. Well, nine times out of ten, maybe it won't hurt nothing or nobody, but it will hurt you. It will vex your spirit. Let's go on. Letter part of verse 3. And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. I mean, he done looked upon her. I guess he liked what he saw, so he told his father, You know, go get her. I want this woman. Let's see what else happened. Now listen, listen carefully to verse number 4. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord. That he was that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines for all that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Now I believe when he first started out, I mean this this is my opinion. I mean we all got one, but this is the way I believe when it, when it first started out. I believe because he said the spirit began to move upon him. I believe when he first started out. I believe he's good intentions. Good intentions will not get you to heaven. Good intentions will get you to hell. It will pave the way to hell. But, who am I to say? Listen to this. Now, on his way down, this verse uh, uh, 5. So Samson went down to Timah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timah. Now, to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. Ah, look at verse number 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he tore a line, uh, part of the lion's jaw. You, know, you all know the story. He ripped the lion, uh, the jaws apart, killed the lion. But in the meantime, he went on down and... When he came back, he saw the lion that he had killed, the carcass laying there. Now, that's not a very pleasant scene, I wouldn't think, in this day and time. But it said, the carcass was full of honey. The bees had built a nest. And he ate. He took it to his mother, his father. They ate. But listen, what else it goes on to say? Listen, listen, listen to this. Look at verse number 13. Let's back up to 12. Then Samson said to them, Let us pose a riddle to you. If you can correctly solve it and explain it to me within the seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. But... If you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 uh, linen and garments and 30 changes of clothing. And they said to him, Pose your riddle that we may hear it. 
So Samson, he said, Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. Hmm. So the story goes on. Listen how they solve this riddle. Then Samson's wife, verse 16, wept and said, You only hate me. You do not love me. You have posed a riddle to the sons of my people. My people, she said. But you have not explained it to me. And he said, Look, I have not explained this thing to nobody. I have not told my mother. I have not told my father. I have told no one what this riddle means. So, listen, what else happened? Now she wept, verse 17, on him seven days while the feast, while, the, while their feast lasted. And it happened that she pressed him so much, then he explained the riddle to the sons of the people. She kept on and on. And they was having a feast during this time, during this seven days. But she kept on and on and on. I could say something right here, but I'll let that slide. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Anybody get a witness on that? So the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, Here's, here's what they said. What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. If you had not kept on and on and on asking her, if you had not kept on troubling her throughout the feast, throughout these seven days, and throughout while we was having a good time, if you all hadn't kept on and on and on, asking, she wouldn't have told you. Amen? But sometimes, you and I as a Christian, we need to keep on and on and on seeking God for what He has got for our lives. And you know, the Bible plainly tells us if we knock, the door shall be opened. Amen? Let's go on. Look at verse number 19. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he went down to Ashkelon and killed thirty of their men and took their apparel and the changes of clothing who had explained the riddle. So his anger was aroused and he went back to his father's house. Now listen to this. And Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. Now, this this transaction here, they thought that since she had kept on and on and on and had aggravated him so that he gave in and told and she told the people what the riddle was, that they just assumed, well, this has went on. He has no use for her, so we'll just give her to his best man. Listen to this. Verse number 15. We're getting closer. Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her. Therefore, I gave her, gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please, take her instead. And Samson said to them, This time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. So he did not do nothing. He did not start out. He did not start up. He didn't. But listen, listen to what happened. Samson caught three foxes. You all know the story. Tied their tails together. Set them on fire. Can you imagine? Now a fox can run fast anyway, but I believe they can really run with a little heat on them, amen. But he set their, their tails on fire, tied them together, joined them together. Well, as they run into the, to, to the fields of, of grain and the fodder shocks, how many knows what a fodder shock is? It's a, for those that don't, 
when you cut your corn and stuff, you bind the stalks and stuff together and stack them in the, boy, I've cut a bunch of them, and stack them, you know, stack them in the field to get ready to, you know, to, to get them. So he tied their, their uh, tails, the foxes' tails together. They run in this field, in, in their fields of the, of the Philistine, burn up their grain and burn up their fields. So therefore, he had destroyed what they already had. So listen to, listen to what else goes on here. Look at verse 6. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of Timite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Revenge. Revenge had taken place. But, as we go on down through here, the Philistines, they came. You know, when, when an action takes place, there's always a reaction. Regardless of what we do, sometimes we don't like it. Sometimes it cannot be prevented. However, there are times that it can be prevented. But in this episode here, as they was, uh, I mean, I can, ima- can you imagine all their crops and their fields and stuff burn up and then they're going to take revenge? So here they come. Come up, come after Samson. So he said, okay, I'll go with you, providing one thing, that you do not kill me, that you will take me but you will not kill me. So they agreed. But listen what else happened here. Look at verse 14. When he came to Leah, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes were on his arms became like flax and burned with fire. And his, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. A fresh jawbone of a donkey, he reached out and took it and killed a thousand. That's the story that a lot of them dwelled on was him, how he, you know, his strength, which I don't take away from that today, but that's what the Lord had already, had already designated and already called forth that he may do. Now look, let's go on down. Look at verse 18. Then he became very thirsty, so he cried. So he cried out to the Lord, and he said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. Now shall I die of thirst into the hand of the uncircumcised. Of the uncircumcised. So God split a hollow place that in Leah, and water came out, and he drank. God will never leave us in the wilderness. Now, we've already said, now, he may, lead, he may lead us into the wilderness for a while, but how many times have we been in dry places and been in places to where we thought, well, the Lord has left me. And we're human, just like all the saints of the Bible, we're human. Sometimes we doubt God. We doubt God's ability to... Let's be honest now. We, we doubt God's ability to, to do whatever. But if God has called you, and God has, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, has spoke to you and told you that something was going to take place Something was going to happen. I guarantee it will happen. It will happen. There is where we, as children of God, need to put our trust. And we need, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, we really need to trust God in these things 
because He will deliver us. He has never failed to deliver His people. Never. You look at the at the stories in the Bible where, you know, the story of uh, of, of Abraham offering up his his son. God made a way. Look at Pharaoh. Look at the children. Moses stretched out the rod. The sea parted. That still amazes me to this day. I get excited every time I hear somebody talk about that or even think about that. You just think the things that God can do. And you know, I know we're living in a, what that we call this modern age and modern times, but things have changed. The world has changed, but God said, I never change. And the same God that delivered the children from Pharaoh, the same God that brought the children of Israel, and the, the same God where the children uh, wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, He brought them out on the other side. Yeah, some didn't see the promised land. I, I, I know that. I realize that. But God is a God of His Word. Amen? Amen. Let's go on. Look down in uh, uh, chapter 16. Now here's where he went down, uh, went down to Gaza. There he saw this harlot named Delilah. And we all know the story, and this is what I was talking about, where a lot of preachers just either dwelled on his strength, dwelled on his hair, or dwell, dwelled on the fact that uh, what he had done. But listen what, what happens here. Samson had, uh, verse 2, when, when the Gazites were told Samson had come, they surrounded the, the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying in the morning, when it is daylight, we'll kill him. We'll kill him. Ain't that just like the enemy to, to, to linger at me? That's why I've always said darkness comes upon the face of the earth. That's when the enemy and the demons come to light. Not that they don't. Not that they're not alive. I mean, they're not afraid of the daylight either. But have you ever noticed that most things that happen tragically always happen in the dark? That's a cover up. That's a cover up. That's a trick of the enemy. But listen, what else it goes on to say? Verse three. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose. At, then he arose, took hold of the doors of the gates of the city and the two gateposts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Now listen to this. And afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So, the Philistines had said to her, we'll give you such and such, we'll give you this silver, all of us will give you 11 pieces. I don't know exactly how many of them there was, but back then, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of cash. And I imagine that would have enticed most of us back in that day. Amen? Verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. Now here we go. Here, here goes Samson again. And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Well, this should have gave him a clue here. Why was she wanting to know all that? I mean, it really did not concern her as far as, you know, uh, 
anything that, you know, she had planned to do. But listen to this. Verse 8. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. She tied him up. But I often thought in looking at this, if, now, now think about this, if she, if they brought these up to her, she bound him with these, and he knew that he could break them, why did he let her do this to begin with? Think about it. He had to be in his right mind. It didn't say anything about here in this in this particular verse here about him not being in his right mind or not uh, being asleep or anything. But let, let's go on down here. Verse nine. Now there were men lying in wait, staying with with her in the room, and she said to them. The Philistines are upon you, Samuel. The enemy, the enemy is here. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks. Then it touches fire. So the secrets of his strength was not known. That's number one. As we go on down through here, she told him again, You have marked me. Verse 19. And told me lies. Now please tell me what you may be bound with. Would that get you to thinking a little bit? Would that not get one to think? But you know, who are, who are we to say? But listen as it goes on here. So he said to her, "If they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Well, number one, Samson should have known that he was not like any other man because the Spirit of the Lord was with him and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Let's go on. But, verse 12, Therefore Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you. Again, he broke them off his arms like thread. That's number four. Number three. Now let's go look at uh, verse 14. This, this was talking about the, uh, the seven locks of his head and, and the, the web of the loom. Now listen to this. So she wove it tightly with the uh, battened of the loom and said to him, Again, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke. He was asleep this time. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Huh. This thing continued on and on. But listen what else it said. Here she's getting serious. Here she's getting desperate. Look at verse number 13. Then she said to him, How can you say that I love you? That you love me? How can you say that? You have, you have, when your heart is not with me, you have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Now my question here would be, if I was Samson in his shoes, why does she want to know all this? Why is it so important? He, she was supposed to love him. Look, look here at verse 16. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so his soul was vexed to death. Now this went on and went on as we know here, and we see that she continued on. So he gave in. He gave in. So finally he told her, if you cut my hair, 
Look at uh, look at verse 19. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man who a a man and had him shaved off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. See, that's what the enemy does to us. He keeps on and on and on. And I say this this morning. We may be strong in one area, but I guarantee somewhere along our our, uh, uh, spiritual walk with the Lord, we've got a weak point. We've got a weak point. I mean, we're all human. This is this is not something new that we do not realize, not something new that has just happened overnight. But if the enemy cannot get you in one area, I guarantee he will get you in another area or try his best. That's why that we need to continuously walk in the Spirit, seek the things of the Lord, and continue our walk and do what we're supposed to do. And we need to rebuke the enemy. Amen? All right, he done got his head shaved. All right, look at the look at verse 20. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I'll go. See, he didn't realize this. I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Hmm. Sometimes we need to take a check. Sometimes we need to make sure where we're at in the family of God. We need to make and double check and make sure where we're at in the army of God because we've all got a place. We've all been appointed a job. And sometimes, if we do not continue and we do not fulfill the job that God has given us, somebody else is going to slip right in. Somebody, because God will get done what He has intentions of doing. One way or another, make no mistake about it. But old Samson, he didn't know anything had happened. So, he got up. I can I can just imagine this in my mind. He got up. He thought, no problem. I'll get out again. But remember, when he was born from his mother's womb, the Spirit of the Lord was with him. And that angel had instructed him, his mother, that no razor shall come upon his head. How many times have you and I been called in to do something or called to do something and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was the Lord that called you, but something or something or the enemy used someone or somebody and you did not do what you were supposed to do. I don't know how many times that throughout the, the, the years of, uh, of being in church and, and, and preaching the Word, I don't know how many times that people have come up to me after church and said, if I had only done this. And, of course, you know, you don't want to kick somebody or condemn them, you know. I mean, they're, they're truly sorry. But my advice and my, and my best thing to them is, well, you know, God will give you another chance. God will 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 call upon you again. And, you know, we need to lift them up, not put them down. Like I said before, God's people is the, is the only army that I know that will kick a person while they're down. We need to pick them up. We need to, we need to pick them up. Give them a word of encouragement. Say something that is that is uh, helpful, not dreadful. 
helpful that will not, you know, put them that will not put them on more of a guilt trip than what they're already on. Amen. Amen. Look at verse twenty-one. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and broke him and brought him down to Gaza. They found they bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. Can you imagine him already knowing that, you know, what the Lord had said, and that no no razor shall, shall come upon his hair, upon his head, cut his hair. What he must have felt and what he was going through after after this. I mean, it hurts us to get something in our eye, let alone having your eye punched out. I just can't imagine. How many in here has ever had uh, uh, cataract surgery or anything? Scratch. Anything. Yeah, a scratch on your eye. Uh, something in your eye. Pink eye. I tell you what, there ain't nothing hurts much worse than getting something in your eye and then to get it in there and can't get it out. And have to continually put drops or something in it for two or three days. Can, I can just imagine what the pain and the agony and the misery that he must have went through when they put his eyes out. Now we're getting down to where we're going. Listen what what happened here. However, this is after this is after he become this grinder in prison and had been in prison. It says. Look at verse number 21. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Now, verse 23. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered, gathered together to offer a great sacrifice, sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and rejoiced. And they said, Our God has delivered us out of the hands of Samson, our enemy. See, they was, they was already their enemy. And the Philistines thought that their God had delivered them. So they was praising uh, uh, Dagon all this time. But look what happened. Look what they said. The people saw, saw him and they praised their God for they said, Our God, Dagon, has delivered into our hands, our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied the dead. Hmm. Verse 25 says, Let's call for Samson. Bring him out. We want to see him. We want to see what he can do. We want to see all that we can see here. So they brought Samson out. I mean, can you imagine? It was just a more or less a laughing stock of what he could do. But keep in mind, his hair had begun to grow back out. And his strength began to to return to him. But look what it said. Look at look at verse 20, uh, 26. Then Samson said to the, to the lad who held him by the hand, see, he couldn't see. They put his eyes out. So, they, I can see now just some mere child leading this giant of a man, this strong man, up in like a uh, the, the story of Ben Hur with Charlton Heston, you know the big columns and stuff of the of the arena and all this. And Samson said, "Let me get in between the pillars. Let me get in. Let me get in between." And then he began to pray. He didn't ask God to spare him. He didn't ask God to 
bring back his eyesight. He didn't ask God for nothing except let me, and he went out just like he came in this world. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And can you imagine a man standing in between two big pillars? And I'm talking, I'm sure that this was probably made out of concrete, some kind of big stone and all this. But, but listen, look at verse 28. Then Samson called to the Lord saying, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And this is the rest of the story. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he had killed at his death were more than he, that he had killed in his life. So I want to leave you with this. It makes no difference what we go through in life. The Spirit of the Lord is always with us. The Spirit of the Lord always dwells in us. And as I said earlier, it makes no difference. I don't care if so-and-so said this about you, such-and-such such said that about this. If you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has spoken something to you, or God has used somebody or someone to speak to you, check it out. Because God uses people. Now, I'm going to tell you this little, this little thing that, that, that happened to me one time. And hopefully, it will help you. Janet and I were at a uh, revival. And I had never saw this man before. Never didn't know didn't know him from Adam, and uh, he came up to me, began to grin, and just you know like you know just just grin, and said, "You know," he said, uh, "God is going to lead you into into different things." He said. It's not going to be nothing new or unfamiliar. But he said, it's almost like driving a car. He said, you're just going to get a new style. One that's a little, a little bit more fancier. I thought, what is, this? what is he talking about? And he, he went on to say a few more things about the Lord, you know, blessing, which it all come to pass. But it, what, I, what I want to get across to you this morning is, if someone speaks something to you, listen. I encourage you to listen because sometimes God will only speak one time. Sometimes he'll speak over and over and over. But as I said earlier, he will get the job done. He will get the job done. Amen? Amen. I just thought as Sister Ruthie told me here uh, several weeks ago that she had been, you don't mind if I tell this, do you? She had been praying for her dad ever since he was six years old. Or she was six years old. And uh, she told Jan and I that she was going to go visit him. And, of course, I, I, I mean, I, I talked to Ruthie from time to time, just, you know, here at church. But I told her, I said, well, I said, I believe God 
is going to do something. And he, he, her dad's 83 years old. Now, mind you, she had been praying for him ever since she was six years old. And she went to Iowa, Idaho, Idaho. And that trip out there was probably the best trip that she ever made. The Lord touched her dad, 83 years old, and he got saved. Somebody, amen, amen, amen. So don't give up. Don't give up. Don't turn aside from anything because God will see the, the finished picture. God sees everything from the beginning to the end. And I know sometimes you and I, as I said, we're just human. We're just people. But you and I have got a job to do. And I'm thankful that you're here today. I'm thankful that, that you all are a dedicated people. And I believe I could ask anybody in here for anything. And I believe that you, that, that, that you would share it or find a way to do so. And see, that's what the family of God is all about. That's what it says, love thy brother, love thy sister, unconditionally. God loves us unconditionally. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. If you're here this 